What's up guys, Jason back again with another nutrition topic. This time we're covering the immune system and foods that help promote recovery. So we're gonna talk about the foods that we want to avoid because they can promote chronic and long-term inflammation which is not gonna help for recovery and can actually help break down your immune system. And then we'll talk about the types of foods that you should be adding in they're gonna help promote overall a healthy digestive system, immune system, and provide the raw materials for your body to be able to recover. So we want to think of every meal that we eat as an opportunity to build ourselves up, add more energy and strength. So if we're looking at those foods, we wanna focus on things that are gonna provide a large return and a high net gain of nutrition and we can make those things taste good with other super healing types of foods that are gonna support your immune system. So if you're looking to speed up your recovery from an injury, cold or flu, or just avoid the flu season, a trip to your grocery store to pick up these foods is a good idea and a good place to start. So we'll start with foods that you are familiar with, those citrus foods and berries. So berries, especially blueberries, are high in antioxidants called anthocyanins that are going to help defend your body and can help counter inflammation in your body. Also that vitamin C plus the fiber are gonna help regulate your blood sugar and help with sustained energy. When it comes to citrus fruits, whether it's grapefruits, oranges, lemons, limes, these foods provide vitamin C but they also provide bioflavonoids so you can actually absorb the vitamin C and it's an easy thing that you can use to add some flavor to your food or squeeze it in anything that you're drinking, add it to a smoothie or so on just for some extra immune support. Next up, cultured veggies. We're talking about things with natural probiotics like kimchi, uh, it could be sauerkraut or any sort of cultured veggies that's going to help bring out more of the vitamins and nutrients and things like cabbage or peppers or garlic. So you're gonna get more concentrated nutrients. Also the probiotics are going to help add some healthy gut bacteria, uh, promote optimal uh, digestive health, and about 80% of our immune system is in our digestive system. So if we have a healthy environment there, we're gonna absorb more of our foods and be overall healthier. And a good pro tip is use these cultured veggies as a glorified condiment. You can put them on salads or with eggs or dishes as a low calorie you know, sweetener or food that's gonna boost your flavor and nutrition. So other vegetables, things like leafy greens. You got broccoli, we got spinach, kale. All these are gonna be extremely nutrient dense and we can put them into soups. We can do steam fry. Uh, also things like peppers. Bell peppers are gonna be high in vitamin C and quercetin, which is gonna help support all the anti-inflammatory benefits. You combine those things with garlic and onions and you have a powerhouse of nutritional defense on your side. Next up, something that's been around for years, talking about broth or stock. Now this is one of the most nutrient dense foods that you can eat. It packs a ton of amino acids, things like glycine, you're gonna have glutamine, you're gonna have uh, chondroitin, all these things that help your tissue, but they also help repair your gut. You have a lot of different minerals and if you have a chicken stock, you'll have things like N-acetylcysteine, a very powerful antioxidant but ultimately you are providing your body with a ton of nutrients that are really easy to absorb and they support your digestive health as well. And as a bonus, you can combine these with you know, your broccoli and your peppers and your onions and garlics uh, and even lemon to help support your immune system in something like a soup, something you can blend up, drink, superfood. And then we got fatty fish. So some of my favorites are salmon, mackerel, sardines, these are very high in omega-3s which are anti-inflammatory and have been proven to help you know, with everything from joint health but that inflammatory effect, it's gonna help your body recover. Also, you're getting things like selenium and your B vitamins that you're gonna be able to absorb a ton of them. So a good, easy digestible type of protein, you can focus on bringing in some extra fishes. I like to get you know, wild salmon, mackerel, or sardines, add something like avocado, 
and some cultured veggies. It makes a really easy, simple meal to consume. Finally, a couple more to add in. We got avocados, good healthy fat that's gonna help your body absorb a lot of these nutrients. Onions and garlics, garlic, which we have mentioned, uh, gonna help support the immune system. And then turmeric, obviously you see curcumin, the active compound in turmeric all over the place that gives it that bright yellow color. That is a powerful antioxidant. It helps you absorb more nutrients and is extremely powerful for uh, inflammation and healing uh, inflammatory actions in the body. So remember, the key here is getting variety. It's not just about eating one of these foods. It's about building your diet around these foods and that is gonna help promote healthy collagen repair and all of the defense and the materials that your body needs to stay strong, healthy, and energized. Now we want to avoid the foods that are going to promote excess inflammation. Think about the foods that are gonna throw fuel on the fire. So these refined carbohydrates and highly processed foods that are gonna be high in trans fats. So anything in vegetable and these seed oils are gonna counter balance or counter effect what the omega-3s are doing with inflammation. They're also going to help just a spillover effect of, of carbohydrates and glucose and insulin problems that is gonna cause your body you know, and, and tissue to break down. It affects your immune system because of the extra inflammation that is gonna be systemic and going all throughout your body. So if your body is sick or you're recovering from a surgery or any sort of issue, that is the time that you want to limit processed foods and refined carbohydrates. Remember, six things that have fiber that are as close to whole foods as possible. Hope this was helpful. Let us know if you have any sort of questions and thanks for watching.